welcome to the MBS show, episode 6. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the guy that was from France, Emilio Daniel. Bonjour, ça va? And joining us today, the admin of MBS, Hazi. Hi guys. How was your day? Who are you asking? Both of you. Any one of you. Okay. Yes. Okay, how did you go first? Uh, well, my day was okay. I had to do something at school today. And then I had to go to this wedding. And that's just about it. How about you, Emilio? I had a 14-hour flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. On which flight, there was a girl who I tried to flirt with. But it turns out I was too scared because I thought her boyfriend was there. Turns out, 10 hours later, it wasn't her boyfriend. She was alone and she wanted to flirt with me. I lose. Your story of fate love was interesting. Anyway, we need to get to our guest. And our guest is Jimmy Lee, the most, well, renowned PMV maker. Hi, guys. How was your day? It was long. I had about six hours of sleep last night. And I've pretty much been at work and uh, I got out all day. I just got back like a couple of hours ago, just in time to record this. I haven't actually, actually had any time to work and stuff. But yeah, it's good to be here. Before we start the show, I would like to ask four important questions from you, Jimmy. First question is, who's your favorite pony? Uh, oh yeah, this is definitely going to be Applejack. I, I'm sure you see my display picture on screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. Like, uh, I like Applejack the best. Applejack is best pony, yes. <laughs> yeah! All right, Emilio seems to agree. <laughs> Completely, there's no argument. <laughs> that's a funny way to spell Fluttershy. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> so anyway, um, what's your favorite episode? My favorite episode is from season one. Like, no, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, let me just think about it a bit more. <laughs> my favorite episode would be Secret of My Excess from season two. Is that the one where Spike became a huge dragon? Yeah, that's the one. And there was a great scene at the end, Ernie and Spike. But that's not an Applejack my episode. Favorite. It's not an Applejack episode, but I kind of like the, dy- the dynamics in the episode. It has the best moment in the show, I think. It is that scene itself, and that's why I like it so much. Question number three is, how did you get into the show? What made you love it? Someone actually linked me the show way back in December. I watched the first episode and I didn't think too much of it. It wasn't until after a few months that I was persuaded to give it another try. I think I saw someone post the Eurobeat Brony songs, like the first season stuff. Stuff like, uh, was it called Giggle at the Ghosty and so on. And from there, I just started watching more and more videos. And I was convinced to actually watch the show then. And I, I think I, the first episode I watched was uh, Four Weather Friends. And from there, it became one long week of donning season one, straight up until Party of One. <laughs> and I was an immediate brony from that point on. So the last question would be, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? I think for the most part, they are generally don't think too much. Like, uh, don't think too much of it or they don't mention it so much. Uh, I don't really talk to my friends about it. I am fairly my interests. And for the most part, I just talk to people online about it. Before we start with the news topic, i like to do some housekeeping. Someone requested that they wanted to hear stories from friends. So that could be only one person. So, Emilio, <laughs> tell us stories yeah. from France. What's in France? Well, okay, I spent about two there. I tried, and I promise you, I tried looking for pony toys and bronies, but I did find <gasps> one brony who actually recognized Night Pony for some reason. I don't know how. He actually recognizes Night Pony. And uh, when I told him I'm Night Pony, he actually asked me. <laughs> and then, uh, well, I found the pony toys in the store. They're actually quite expensive for Europe, Europe for some reason. They're like The smaller ones are like 10 euros, which is like 40 ringgit. Which is way beyond what we sell them for over right here. So, uh, and it's generally very cold there, so don't go there right now. You get a speech to them. I doubt I have the money to go there. <laughs> you said that somebody recognized Night Pony? Yeah, actually, someone did, yes. The only uh, pony I found there was one that actually recognized Night Pony. I'm a bit confused with that. Like, how? You, is it your OC or someone else? <laughs> how, how do we explain this? <laughs> It's my split persona. <laughs> Your split persona. So it's an OC. Yeah, it's in, a, in, in every way other than one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of like how Boney and Acoustic Boney does it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was it a commission or a piece of art? Yeah, Night Pony is actually, uh, well, it's, it's my OC project for to make music, Pony music. Oh, and, right. Uh, he actually recognizes me from Twitter because uh, 
I've been talking with Andrew Pony quite a few times and I think he recognizes my tweet handle. So he actually recognizes me from there. That is all good and lovely, but how the hey did he recognize you without you being shown I on? Walk up with him. Okay. He was wearing a pony shirt. Tell us the situation. We want to know. This is a situation. I was in a park in a Toulouse France and there was it wasn't a brony meetup. It wasn't anything like that. It was. It is the complete opposite of a brony meetup. It was a punk rock meetup. Continue. I am not kidding you. And in the middle of that, those group of friends, I noticed one guy wearing a pony shirt. In the middle of a meetup, when people are wearing all this golf hair, this make heavy makeup and spiky hair, uh, cut up boots and stuff. There's a guy wearing a pony shirt right in the middle of that group. Okay. I swear he was wearing a pony shirt in the middle of the group. He was part of the group. Okay. Um. So what happened then? Uh, nothing much because uh, I apparently caught him at a bad time when they, they were about to go off. So I can I didn't even catch his name. It was like actually he did give me his name, but it was in French. I didn't catch it. <laughs> uh, My French is very limited. Oh no, that that's bad. We we sh- we could have shouted him out on the show. Yeah. Well, at least you're recognized. One guy. <laughs> uh, it was weird. Yeah, like six thousand miles away from Malaysia. Well, one guy makes all the difference. So anyway, let's get into news topic. In today's news topic, Lauren Faust's pony concept art up for bids. Starting from the fifth till eighth of April, you can bid for Lauren Faust's pony drawings. Links in the show notes. The reason for this is to help benefit storyboard artist Joey Adams and his family. Joey Adams is experiencing the unimaginable. He nearly lost his twin boys over the Christmas holiday due to a possible genetic illness. Two years ago, he and his wife Ginger lost their daughter under similar circumstances. The boys survive, but baby Ian is currently undergoing grueling chemo while undergoing extensive genetic testing. He will need a bone marrow transplant and his brother Henry may need one as well. Needless to say, all of the treatment, missed days of work have caused a huge financial burden for the Adams family. If you would like to help the Adams family through these rough times, you can visit their website at supportthedadams.com and make a donation to their PayPal. We at the MBS Show wish us all the best for the Adams family and our prayers goes out to you. So that's not much really of a news, but just to let you guys know that you can bid for Lauren Faust's original sketch work on eBay if you like. And it's for good cause. That's just really, really, really bad luck. I wish the best to those people, uh, Adams, the Adams family. So on to the next topic, Pony Billboard up in Los Angeles. Links in the show notes. Um, new advertising billboard up in Los Angeles promoting the My Little Pony Royal Wedding. Um, I can't say much about this because I haven't seen it live, but have you guys seen the picture? Oh, we yeah. have seen the pictures. Yeah, I did. Everyone has hats. It's like Team Fortress too. You have to pay for another hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, it's, like, it's pretty much the same place as the old billboard, the Bridal Maids one. That's yeah, interesting. So, I find it funny though. How many of you have actually watched the original uh, Royal Wedding or paid any attention or even cared? Um, not me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I actually watch like, parts of it. Okay. They have a live recording of the crowds and all. Hmm, okay. yeah, so. Like, uh, w- w- did anything terribly interesting happen? Or was it just people just walking? From what I can yes. tell on the uh, news on EQD, they did a few comparison pictures of people with hats. <laughs> <laughs> hats again. Yeah, no, I'm serious. They they did the whole hat thing. Like, compare this person to this pony with the same hat. But no, no. What I'm interested in is that shop down below. The shop name is Valhalla. Yeah, it's like, it's been there before. I, I mean, no what kind of shop is that? It sounds so cool. Valhalla. Actually, it's just an old Norse tale. Yeah, I mean, is Thor going to be there and he's going to be serving us food? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, okay, Valhalla is actually the place where Odin has his meals every day. <laughs> I want some Viking burgers now. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Everyone's gonna go out for McDonald's after this, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Not me. I'm not going to McDonald's today. I have ponies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, um, on to the next topic. Uh, I think Emilio, you should handle this one. Uh, All right, I can see why. Okay. Uh, in other news, a new Brody was detected. 
the co-founder of Valve, Gabe Newell, admitted that he is indeed a brony. In a recent interview on geekaweek.net, Gabe Newell was asked, is there anything you secretly geek about? And his answer was, I watch My Little Pony. So Gabe Newell, go hoof to you, man. I love you. You're never going to release Half-Life 3, but I still love you. No homo, right? <laughs> no homo. No homo. No homo. <laughs> Well, at least now, at least now we know why episode three is taking so long. Yeah, he's been watching ponies. <laughs> he's, he's busy making everyone at Valve watch my little phone. <laughs> it was like this is the next big thing besides Portal. <laughs> no, um, you know how Team Fortress is always related to ponies. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> oh my god, we found it. Oh. Oh, we already have hats, right? We must have <laughs> go the whole nine yards. <laughs> I actually emailed this guy once and he replied. <laughs> really? What do you say? What do you ask? I asked about Half-Life 3 <laughs> and then I was talking about coffee and stuff. Because I found out he likes coffee, uh, certain type of coffee. And he said, no, Half-Life 3 will never be released, but I will love to have coffee with you one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, okay. Oh, well. Okay. It was, time, it was, it was like uh, during the time Half-Life Episode 2, the first one came out, yeah. So the the next news is My Little Pony German DVD and CD on sale. Links on the description. The My Little Pony Friendship is Magic DVD and CD is on sale on Amazon.de, the German version of Amazon.com, of course. There are two DVDs on sale now, and each DVD contains three episodes. The CD are just audio drama of the episodes, and each CD has four tracks. So what do you think, guys? Well, the DVDs are fine and all, but what I'm really interested in is what is on those audio drama thingies. Okay, um, I took a listen, and it's kind of interesting. Um, anybody know what an audio drama is? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah okay. I know. And anybody know what an like audio a... book is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, basically what they did is um, they ripped the show and just added in a few descriptions of what's going on. Ah, really? Is that it? Yeah, basically, okay, um, let me give you an example. Let's say this scene, the, the opening. The narrator's talking about um, something about ponies, and then it goes to the Celestia voice. And then after that, let's just say um, Applejack and Twilight were walking after Apple Bucking. So the narrator says something about, oh, Twilight Sparkle and Applejack were Apple Bucking, and they were doing something. It's basically like that, but it was all in German. It's all in German. Mm. How, how are the voices? Are they any good? That's a hard nine, question. Nine, nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a hard question to answer, really, because um, for us, it's not the same as the Americans. But for the Germans, I think it's normal to them. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. Um, does Applejack have any more of a country accent than usual? How does German How country... do... <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do you have... You still have I don't think they do. Well, I, I have a German friend, and they say that uh, like country Germans sound like Austrians for some reason. I have no idea what's the difference. So they sound like you, Jackman? Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> not Australians. Austrians, Arnold. Austrians. Yeah. Uh, you, you, Jackman. Get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Now that you say that, I got, um, I got an image of Big Mac saying, Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I'm not even going to spread it to the world. No. It's horrible. Moving on. Move. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, for moving us on. And it's a good place to start. In today's guest time, it's you, Jimmy. Um, okay. Jimmy Lee, or better known as mm-hmm, Mandarin Orange, he is well known for his PMV work. And his most popular work is The Stars with Eight in Her Escape, Cosmic Love. So, Jimmy, it's your time. Let's get into some questions. First question from us is... Sorry, um, guys, you want to play the random number generator game? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Emilio? What? Okay. All three of us pick a number from 1 to 10. Emilio, you? 6. Hazi? 9. 9. <laughs> okay, I'll go for... for... This is going to be a recurring, a recurring joke, isn't it? It's not going to be Oh, boy. So. Here we go. And I'll pick number four. So, it's three. So, I'll go first. And Hazi and Emilio, pick again. Okay. Uh, if you want a ten? Yes. Two. Hazi? Five. Okay, so Emilio goes next. Alright. 
So I'll start off with the questions. So, um, Jimmy, what made you want to do PMVs? Well, here's the thing. When I was starting out in the fandom, I mostly just uh, like listen to the music and watch some of the videos. And for the most part, I never actually got into the fandom with the intention of making videos. I didn't go in there like, oh, I'm going to be here and I'm going to make the most awesome PMVs ever. It was never anything deliberate. It was never anything conscious. I did watch a few videos and uh, I always liked how funny they were and they were always entertaining. And at some point, I was listening to uh, the Avalanches. You would know this by now. Uh, it was It's the song in Abolition Psychiatrist, uh, Frontier Psychiatrist. And I thought, you know, this would make a good video for some reason. If I put Applejack here and, oh, Rainbow Dash is arguing with him. And then Applejack argues with Rarity later. And I could use that for it. And from there, it just basically got stuck in my head. And no matter what I did, there would be this voice in my head that's basically screaming, make me. The PMV was just telling me, telling me just make me, bring me out into the world. And I basically just followed the voices. That's really? how I became a PMV maker. The voices made me one. Usually that's never a good sign, but I'm glad you followed those voices in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you might want to go to a shrink. <laughs> voices no. tell me to make stuff. <laughs> okay, so yeah. the voices in your head made you want to do PMVs. <laughs> okay. Uh, Emilio, next question. All right, so the next question. So Jimmy, what kind of programs do you use to make your PMVs? And what kind of computer do you use? As for my computer, I actually have a brand new laptop. It's oh. uh, like I got it's from like last year. I was already making PMVs on my old Pentium Four. It's a like 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 a six year old PC. It's slow as all hell. It wasn't until I, uh, September of last year that I got a new uh, laptop, and I've been working on it ever since. As for what programs I use, I use Sony Vegas Pro Ten, and uh, more recently I have also adopted uh, Adobe. After Effects CS5 mm. uh, for, I got for more uh, intense special effects work oh, okay. and I got that's roughly the main programs I use I use a whole bunch of other ones but those are the main, main important ones I myself am a multimedia student and I have played with uh, Adobe Premiere and all those stuff and I have no idea how you do the stuff that you do uh, well, can I just say after you type the you use <laughs> It is, like a, it is kind of unwieldy, yes. I would uh, completely agree. It takes a million years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just putting my fist up to the screen right now. <laughs> Hazi, next question. Okay. What is your inspiration when making a PMV? Is it the music or a scene in one of the episodes? It's almost always the music. I would just listen to the songs and if something just occurs to me, because sometimes I'll just be listening to the songs and the scene will just pop into my head. Like, I, I've already given you an example of the uh, Apple and Psychiatrist one. I just heard that little voice clip that goes, uh, that, boys need, that boy needs therapy. And immediately, that whole scene from Four Weather Friends plays out in my head with them arguing between each other. And that's how these things roll. The good ones tend to pop out of nowhere. Sometimes it takes some coaxing. Sometimes you really like a song and you go, okay, this will make an excellent PMV for, oh, I don't know, Flourish Chai or Rarity. But nothing actually pops to mind, like scenes or whatever. So you need to go digging. You need to go construct an entire story around whatever the song is about. And you work from there. But I find the best ideas tend to come to me like immediately. They just blur. Like that, uh, Cosmic Love was one of them. I actually listened to the song about 20 times at that point, thinking, oh, this would make a great Luna PMV, but there's like 15 seconds of footage. This was before <laughs> Season 2 came along. Ooh. We have 15 seconds of footage of Luna from the uh, Episode 2 of Season 1. And at some point on the 21st listen, I just thought, maybe if I use Twilight instead, and poof, everything just rolled out in front of me. You could, I could see the entire video just stretching out in front of me, and I knew I had to do it. Hey, Jimmy, um, do you remember that one video with Pinkie Pie acting as that comedian? How was that one made? How was that one made? I was listening to an episode of uh, This American Life. It's a, it's a very popular podcast uh, in the States. I listened to that and I thought, hey, Pinkie would be good for this. As it turns out, lip syncing is kind of a pain. It's, <laughs> it's really, really hard. Okay. Uh, it, while it kind of worked, it didn't really take off as good as... Like, it didn't really take off. No one submitted, submitted it to EQD or anything. I'm okay what? with that. Okay, I, I gotta admit, this is actually my favorite. <laughs> on, here's a good story to the next question. Um, did you know that your PMV has been featured on some live streams before the new episode starts? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I know that Appaloosa Psychiatrist gets a lot of airplay on like Philly or something. Like the Philly thing too, yeah, it yeah. gets played there a lot. Usually for in conjunction with Lightning Lassen's Hardware Store, which is um, an amazing PMV. And it won, I think, for that month that it came out, August or something. I love that PMV. I, I love uh, the yeah, music too. I, I got, I, yeah, but yeah, I have friends still be talking and they're like, oh, your PMV is in the channel. Like, I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. um, you know your cosmic love, like, yeah. to be honest, like, huh, this is great, oh my, the video's great, and then, like, an email came in asking us to feature you, and then, like, huh, okay, you do PMVs, like, oh my god, this is this guy! <laughs> You didn't, you didn't know this until recently. Uh, to be honest, yes. Because the thing is, with um, the live stream, they never put a link to the yeah. video. So it's like, huh, I wonder who made this. And there's never a name there. So yeah, that's true. I know the video, but I don't know who's the original artist who did the video. So I was shocked that video was a Malaysian that did it. So I would okay. say it was pretty good. Hmm, okay. Because I made that all the way back in November, I have no idea when you joined the Brony fandom. It might be a bit later than that. That prob that would probably be why uh, you don't know. I never really promote myself. I never really talk in the MBS uh, Facebook page at all. So that could be why. Or why it is lying under the radar for all this time. I'm glad you enjoy it though. Yeah, I mean, it's good. Um, anyway, on to the next question. Sorry for that terrible segue. But, um, <laughs> Emilio. For Pony, did you do idea f &D? No, never. It has never occurred to me until ponies came along and then the voices started. So let me guess, the voices you're hearing are the main six, right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no, no, not really. I don't really uh, have hallucinations about the main six top giving. It's the actual PMB itself pounding on the, on the insides of my skull and trying to get out. That's literally what happens. That is kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it, does, it, it does when I put it that way. <laughs> wow. It's all cool, though. Well, this is what happens on our show. We creep people out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, on to the MBS member questions. Hazi, would you like to take this? Okay, sure. So, the first question. How and when did you start editing videos? What what got you interested in it? Uh, I guess that's alright. <laughs> Never mind, just let him answer it, never mind. I think, I, thought, I think I partially answered this earlier, but uh, I can tell you a little bit about what influenced me and what put the initial seed of the idea into my head. There's two very influential videos uh, that, that's very important to me. Let's make that three, actually. Uh, the first would be Night of Pony by Unanimous Delivers. I think, has everyone seen that? I think I may have, but I got no idea who it is. Is that situation? Uh, it's the one with the, the, all the voices uh, synced up to the Toho track, Night of Nights, I think. Oh, I think so. Oh, wow. uh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a very very famous video. It's, it's like uh, I just checked; it had like seven hundred thousand views. The first PMV I ever watched, more or less. Uh, it's I, I thought it was brilliant. I couldn't stop listening to the song for about a week after I heard it. So yeah, I guess the other two videos are a lot less famous. The second video I watched that basically put the seed of PMV in my head was this old video called "Is Spike Gay or European," which uses Billy Blonde musical. And while it's not terribly well lip synced, it put the idea into my head that. Ponies are an amazing place for comic relief and they're extremely funny, they have great faces and it, they work well with video. And the final video would be this one video by this guy called LG573. He made a video called Be Nice to Twang in which this one I think is actually might be the most uh, important one to me because it taught me the virtue of editing in that just by rearranging a few scenes and having skillful uses of music, you can basically change the entire context of the scene. In that video, to the tune of, I think, uh, In the Hall of the Mountain King, I think, you, I got, let me just hum a few bars of it. You know that song? Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I know. There's a remix of it on the social network soundtrack by Trent Reznor. It's very jarring, it's actually kind of frightening at the, at the very end and basically LG573 sets up this video and he basically takes twice for being bullied by all her friends Rainbow Dash storms in the cloud and makes it rain on her and uh, Pinkie Pie bumps her out of the way and things like that eventually Twilight loses it <laughs> she starts to do stuff to everyone and she poisons the town she sets fire to Rarity and she turns into ashes that fall in the Fluttershy's hand and Fluttershy cries and stuff that was actually the inspiration for Appaloosan Psychiatrist basically instead of Twilight I just used Appaloosan Jack, that was basically the seed of it, and that's when the voices started. <laughs> oh, that's never good. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this is gonna be a recurring thing, right? I'm the guy with the voices. <laughs> yes, after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Hazi, next question. Okay, uh, the second question is 
making PMVs your first try in editing, or had you been doing it for some time? I was actually my first time, literally. Oh, okay. uh, I think uh, Adolescent Psychiatrist is not actually my first video. I made a test video just to learn Sony Vegas. It's terrible. You will never see it. It will never be shown. But after that, I immediately made Adolescent Psychiatrist. And that was basically the first video I have ever made in my entire life. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. Is it? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you think so. So the last question from me. Any upcoming projects you don't mind sharing? Uh, okay. Because I really like to know. Okay. I currently have a, another main cast video in the works. It's taking it, it got, it, it's taking a really long time. I know it's been five months since I put up a video, but just trust me, it, it will be worth it. It's a Fluttershy video, and I have no idea when it will be ready, but it will be ready eventually. It's on hold right now, because right now, I believe... Do you guys know of the second anthology? Um, not sure. Called Ponies the Anthology 2. Oh, yeah, know? yeah, okay. yeah. Let me give you a brief, a brief rundown. The first anthology was uh, created by a group of people led by Dr. Dinosaur, who created the Ponies video, the, the one set to uh, Kanye, I call Kanye West Power. Do you guys know that one? Oh, yeah, that one. I like that one. Yes. Dr. Dinosaur was in charge of that, along with a few other people who had assisted it. So yeah, that's the one that basically kicked off the entire anthology. And it was a huge hit. And I think sometime this year, Dr. Dinosaur came up to me and said, do you want to work on the second anthology with us? And I said, do I? Do I? I don't so, think yeah, that's a I, yes. I, I, <laughs> yeah, yes. Right now, I am completely deep in making shorts for the, for the second anthology. It will be coming out. Uh, we're aiming for Bronick Pond. But yeah, right now, that is my main focus. You're going to see at least one final. Final Fantasy 7 reference yeah. and amongst other that <laughs> amongst other things uh, there's gonna be a whole bunch of weirdness there's gonna be a lot of geekiness there's gonna be some really bizarre stuff but I hope that everyone enjoys it oh and by the way you can uh, if you guys would like to know more about the Ponies video the Kanye West parody there is an article on it on uh, mlponies.com that the, uh, Dr. Dancer wrote up some time ago and you can go read it and it's a really really good read if you're interested in making videos if you're interested in starting if you're interested in how that video was made or you just like that video a lot go read it okay i will i will i need to bring you back as another guest for other things you have an interesting point of view really yep anyway um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on to my question. Mars Fizz asks, what's your opinion on the bronies of the fandom? Let me think about this a bit. I guess I can see kind of a divide that's been forming in the past few months between bronies, I guess. Uh, especially with things like Derby Gate. The whole thing about people complaining about how she's kind of offensive or something. As well as the whole division between people who like club and don't like club. There's this whole division. And people are sort of splitting up in the brony community. But for the most part, I can tell you right now, most of the bronies are Met have been nothing but fantastic. They are yeah, all yeah. friendly. They're all great people. They're all really charming for the most part. Uh, and generally, so you you get charming. Well, you 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 gentlemen are really charming. You two you two hearts. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. For the most part, I have had nothing but good times in this community. It's been really awesome. People are really supportive. It's like when I first video, I was expecting like two thousand views at the most, and I thought, oh, it's only QD. Okay. <laughs> and people just poured in. This kept telling me how much they loved this, how much they thought it was great. Like, how did you do this? You're so good at this. It was a huge ego boost to me. And if it weren't for all those people just dropping by, dropping comments, watching this video, putting it on your live streams, I would not be continuing this right now. So, you know, I have bronies to thank. Bronies got me into this fandom in the first place. It wasn't just the show, you know. Uh, like, I watched the first episode. It didn't get me. It was the brony fan content that dragged me back. It was the European brony remixes. It was that Nile Pony video. It was pretty much everything. All the content that just came come, come, comes out of this fandom is just so completely overwhelming, so inspiring that I can't help but feed into it, you know. It just flows right back into me and I need to share my own vision with other people. So that's my opinion of Burnley community. They are inspiring. They have inspired me in turn. And yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> you explained it in a good way that I have never heard before. It was... <laughs> I think, uh, I think we, we, we bronies will have our bath. We have our slightly embarrassing but for the most part, we are good. I think we are a force of good and we will continue to be a force of good as far as I'm concerned. The same person asked, in what way have being a brony affected your life and how has it affected your relationship with your family and friends? 
to be honest, I got hasn't really changed all that much. I'm still kind of a bit of a in real life kind of a very shy. A bit withdrawn. I got a bit quiet. A bit uh, not too keen on talking to people. But online, it's helped immensely. People, I got I've met so many new people. I talk with them constantly. We all we share all these things with one another. It's been nothing short of a good time, more or less. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Before you were Brony, have you been active in any other fandom? You know what? For the longest time, no. Really. <laughs> Yeah, I've mostly been. Le- I, I mostly look. I just look at stuff. You know, when I was thirteen, I think I was in the Sonic the Hedgehog fandom. Oh, <laughs> let's not go there. Let's not go there. Yes, we shall detour. And yes. at one point, I was really in the Fire Uh, sorry, sorry, I was really in the Fire uh, Firefly. Sorry, Firefly. Firefly. <laughs> Firefly. The show. The show. Yes. Ah, yes. You know, okay. The one, cool. the one, the Western sci-fi thing. I was, oh, really okay. in the, I was really in that, amongst other things. But to be honest, nothing has really grabbed me by the throat as much as Brody's have. As much as this show has. What's your opinion if in season 3 Hasbro decides to make MLP more serious? It would be a bad thing. A really bad thing. Explain your point of view. By What do you mean by serious? Serious would be like dramatic, maybe a bit more gritty, less jokes, more, I guess more epic stuff going on. Imagine for a moment, you, you see ponies on the screen and then like Twilight steps out and goes like, Tonight we die in hell or something. Yeah, uh, like the, the entire time I'm mentioning serious, getting serious in season 3, I couldn't help but remember of Clem's uh, Tsubasa Chronicle. Oh, oh, oh boy, yes. Like, everything was cheer hard and light in the beginning, and suddenly you thought. Let him go. Like, what? It sounds like that sounds like, that sounds like every other enemy ever. Yeah, true. Oh no, Amelia's rocking back and forth right now. That's not good. That's not good. We need to give him a hug. Someone, someone give him a hug. Uh, but yeah, in general, I find one of the best qualities of the show is the fact that it's colorful, it's funny, it's lighthearted. Uh, nothing is ever taken too seriously. Nothing is ever explained. Uh, not, nothing is explained in too, too much detail. I mean, like ma- things like magic and such. It's left intentionally vague. And it's everything is done in service of what is funniest and what is most entertaining. Uh, entertaining and why it's most heartwarming as well. Uh, okay. There's a goodness to the show that I think making it more serious would completely destroy our project. Like, oh, we can leave this kind of thing to the fan fiction, we can leave it to music, we can leave it to basically all the fan content, we can leave it to uh, really dramatic videos using Florence and the Machine music. But yeah, for the most part, keep it what it is. I think the fans want nothing more than the show to, to continue being a really happy fun show. What about if they take it the way like they did with Sonic Adventures? You know that one where they call it you mean, Sonic? The second, you mean the second one, right? Yeah, Sonic ZAM. Uh, uh, there, there was the first cartoon that was like using Urkel as like Sonic's voice that was horrible. <laughs> yeah, they still do with the second one, the more dark one, they say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was still Urko, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, was, it went darker. It went like, oh, there's robots everywhere. And uh, it's, it's this dark dystopic future where the, uh, where this uh, bunch of uh, fuzzy creatures are fighting for survival yeah, and but... for freedom underneath a dystopian empire. Uh, yeah. What if they make no. it that way? Would it be entertaining? <laughs> really? I mean, would it be really entertaining? Ponies? Yeah. This is really <laughs> hard because <laughs> I, 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 I have like a... I, I got, I had got, on, the, on, on that note, on follow-up question, I tried reading that, I couldn't make it true. There was a point where, there was, there was a point where Lil Pip just blows up, blows up a pony and I'm like, no, stop, no, oh. stop, don't do this to me. I, I, I just put it down. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's like a, but yeah, there is so much goodness in the show that if you ever try to put a grim dark twist to it, I think it will just fall flat on its no. It just doesn't suit it all that well. So that's just my opinion. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, it has to be us because we all know that Sonic Set AM was a bit darker than its original counterpart which was silly and silly and slapstick really slapstick that's true yes but let's put it this way friendship is magic the show right now it's actually pretty serious in certain places it's, it's serious when it needs to be uh, we have moments like the the, the pilot episodes the two parts like Discord and uh, the first two episodes with my memo those are pretty good let's just, let's just put it this way even though they have some silly moments they have some moments that are genuinely serious and people draw on those people extrapolate from those and they make some great fan art and they make some great fan music and frankly that is the level of ser- that's enough seriousness for everyone that's, that's, that's enough seriousness for it to be interesting there's there's a point got even the my most favorite moment in the show which would be the moment where spike and rarity are falling to the sky in screen my access that was that was really serious they were about to die and true yes that was extremely serious and it was one of the most dramatic moments in the show and i love it that's the kind of seriousness i want not the seriousness that's like blood guns uh more blood things like that <laughs> okay okay so um on to the next question uh medium um 
Sorry, Jimmy. That's the question he asked. I love you with all my heart. I love you like a brony man. <laughs> Yay! You hear that, girl? <laughs> I'm sorry. Those are the questions that asked. You do realize I just friends over him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love you like a brony man. You brony zone him. Yep. <laughs> okay. It's one of my, pow- one of my powers. Uh, along with the voices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hazi. Wait, the next, the next question. Okay, from Kelvin Chu, are you going to get around working on another PMV anytime soon? Yes, I have been working it on it for the past five months. You do not need to worry about this. It will come out when it's ready. Okay, that's all I have to say about. Just like Gabe News Half Life Three. <laughs> 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 Yes, I got, okay, let go. let's just put it this way. Uh, the video is about 80% complete. It will come out eventually. <laughs> just like Diablo 3. <laughs> that, 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 that is coming out, okay? It's yeah, coming. like they say, it will come out when it's ready. Now it's ready. <laughs> That's right, yes. It will be, I got, and it will be fantastic. You, will, you, you guys are going. Uh, but yeah, it's been, I've been working on it. It's been taking an immensely long time simply because I chose to put a ton of work on myself. Just, maybe I should, I got, uh, maybe I should explain more. It's a very intensive video because I have to basically go through the show and then basically extract every single instance of Flourish Eye from the show footage. Uh, it's a process called masking. I did a bit of it in the Cosmic Love video. This is on an even greater scale than Cosmic Love. You know, you know I've seen in uh, Cosmic Love, somewhere in the middle where Twice walking through the Starfield, Everyone knows that, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's basically what I did there. I just bit masked out Twilight, extracted her from the scene, and put it, like, just replaced her into a different scene entirely. What I'm doing with this video is that I'm not just doing it for about 15 seconds. I'm doing it for almost the entire length of it. And that's why it's taking so long. I have to basically go frame by frame and just pluck Flourish Eye out from the scene and replace it uh, amongst, like, uh, in addition to doing all these other stuff, like making the scene making the scene pretty and, oh, and all these effects and blah, 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 and so on. And that's why it's taking so long. And I apologize. All I can ask for people right now is to be patient and to give me more time to work on, to work on stuff. It's in, the, it's in the works. Just be patient. It will come out. It will be awesome. That explains a lot. <laughs> you mind pimping out your page if you want to? All right. Uh, my page is on YouTube. You just, all you need to do is look up, just Google Mandarin Orange. That's M M M. I got M, two, M, two M's at the front, then Mandarin, then Orange. But you should know, I got you, I got, you guys should know my videos already. If you haven't, go watch them. I like the views. I like the comments. I need your love. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, here's an interesting love. question. Here's an interesting question. Why Mandarin Orange? Why Mandarin Orange? Okay. With double M's. Uh, I can tell you right now. It's got nothing to do with uh, Mandarin Orange. Uh, it's got nothing to do with that Skyzo clip. The one with uh, Luke. Uh, it's got nothing to do with that. Celestia sending people to the moon. It's got nothing to do with bananas. It's because Mandarin and I thought that mm, just just adding a few M's at the front would just solve my problem. And it, it it makes it sound kind of ambiguous. It sounds it sounds like I'm pausing. It sounds like I'm <laughs> thinking. But there's no actual reason besides the fact that Mandarin Orange by itself was taken. <laughs> oh, okay, that explains a lot. And joining us now is Joey. How are you, Joey? I'm good. I had a good day. Um, anything interesting happened because um <laughs> we're almost done. Uh, <laughs> well, um. <laughs> I just came back from a party, that's why. Uh, it's all uh, cool then. No problem. Jimmy just explained his story and his YouTube page. You can listen to it when I finish editing your show. But it's time to go into email time. Um, Joey, you want to take this one? Sure thing, my dear Princess Norman. Uh. <laughs> 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 Sorry, okay, continue. Oh, you. Reading my email to you on episode 4 of your show, wanted to uh, clarify that I do know that I knew that Daniel is a co-host. It's just that I had no comment directed to him at that time. Now I do. He's telling that he isn't forgotten and he must love. And by now probably had a blast in front if he found ponies or bronies there. I'm gonna do share on the next episode. Joe's still good and captivating. Pretty sleek as did you made and I could really see effort put into it. Just one suggestion for you guys this time. How about making a transcript of the dialogue spoken? Listening to the history of MBS is nice but it would be 20% cooler if there was a transcript next to me. Kind of like watching the show with subtitles on. I realize this suggestion might not be worth the time and effort. 
But this is just my two cents. Keep begging muffins. Muffin derp. Thanks for the email, Muffin derp. Okay, um, Emilio, is there anything else we need to know about your French trip? Well, there was a red light district, but let's not get to that. Uh, only if we Moving were an on. 80s show. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, about making a transcript for the show. That's a great idea. But the thing is, um, if you listen to this show, um, it's kind of hard to make a transcript with all of us talking and mostly derping all of the time. So... <laughs> I, th- I, think, I, I think it's possible. You can just edit those out and you can just throw in the questions and answers and just just, just leave the important stuff in. You don't have to type out every instance of us bursting in a laughter. Or every, single, or, or every time Emilio goes, nine, 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 nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can would be interesting. Out, you can even leave out the bit where I talk about the voices in my head. <laughs> I may try it. I may try it. Um, if it's on and there is a transcript, cool. If there's not, well, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, Hazi, um, this one's for, well, huh, uh, let's just say a Girafa emailed us and got <laughs> Jimmy on the show. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you, Ego. Thank you, Hazi, for uh, you know the suggestion, and I'm glad to be here. So, no problem. We're glad to have you here. It was fun talking to you. Yeah, thank you. I got, I'm I'm just happy to just talk about like talk about all this stuff. Uh, no one ever no one ever really asked me about the why. Mm-hmm. Except for like fellow, my fellow PMV makers uh, who are all working on the anthology with me. And here I go again. I'm gonna go pick it out. Uh, and like, uh, I'm working on the anthology right now and, and expect it sometime around BronyCon alright watch out if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com that was our guest Jimmy and thanks for being on Jimmy we really appreciate it it's been a great time thanks okay oh we love you too <laughs> okay <laughs> let's end the show then so I've been Norman Sanzo and I'm Hazi, admin of MBS. And I'm Joey, better known as Recycle Tiger. And I'm the guy with the voices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Herself near animals, she tries away from her own kind. Why can't I mention picket pie and the way she kind of acts a bit like me sometimes? You see, I used to hate that I liked my little pony. Not anymore. And I'm proud to be a pony. You shouldn't be like that. She could be 20 percent cooler. Ten seconds flat. Why don't you mention Rainbow Dash and her acrobatic skill? How she will try off in anything just to get a little thrill. Why don't you mention Applejack with the battle of the southern style power thrill? See, you don't have to think that you hate my little pony. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
prim and proper She couldn't make it in a fight And I'm gonna mention Twilight but She's kind of pretty close to that word Tucked away for taking us for any day How about you? Would you do what I do? Or be phony? I'm asking you You proud to be a brony? You proud to be brony? 